All right, this video, we are gonna talk about the break-in oil on a 3.6 liter Pentastar. Now this engine is specifically in my 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited. And I am about to do my very first oil change on it. We're at 4,530 miles on the odometer, six months into it. But this video, we're talking about Blackstone Laboratories. We are going to take an oil sample while we do this oil change. We're gonna send it in and then see what the analysis comes back for a break-in. And this will pretty much show you on a 3.6 liters what to kind of expect. Hopefully everything will be normal. I have no reason to not believe it won't be. So with that, let me get that oil sample and we'll get to it. Welcome from inside my 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee, where today we are going to talk about the 3.6 liter Pentastar engine that is inside this, and specifically the break-in oil, because if you saw my oil change video, I had said that I took a sampled oil to send into Blackstone Laboratories, because like with all my oil for all my vehicles, I'm doing analysis reports for my own info and for you guys, because most people don't need to send in with every oil change, but I like to, I like to have that info. This one is gonna be a little more interesting because this one is the initial oil change, the very first ever oil change. And I did it with about 4,500 miles on the odometer. And so the oil I took out was the actual factory oil. It is what this Jeep came in when it got transported from Detroit where it was built down here to Texas. So for those that you know, Blackstone Laboratories are out of Indiana. They're one of the places that do oil analysis. It's only $35 at the time of this recording. That's how much it costs uh, to get a sample kit. You just request one, they'll send it to you for free and they give you the little plastic bottle, shipping uh, pre-labeled shipping return envelope, basically everything you need to get the sample and send it back to them and they pay for it so you don't have to pay for shipping or anything. And I don't even have to drop it off post office. I just put it in my mailbox, raise that little red flag and mail mail guy picks it up and sends it off. So $35 flat, no tax, no nothing on top of that. And I'll link to their site down in the description down below. And depending what time of year, how busy they are, you might get a sample back pretty quick, may take a month or so. I can't remember how long it take, took to get this one back, but they email it to you. So I just go and email and print it off. So I will display a screenshot on screen for you. And let's go over this and see what it looks like with a break-in oil, which includes all that break-in period when all the engine components are seating themselves. And I did make note of that on the report. So on there, it's a form you fill out. If you have any questions you have, ask them. They are, they've been awesome. Like anytime you have a question, they will always answer it in the comments here. So let's read the comments. What do they have to say? Hey, Christopher, that's me. This sample read high in iron and silicon compared to averages. Cause you see they have universal averages listed here. But that's no problem at all, since this is just the initial wear-in stuff. The universal averages show how this engine type tends to look after 6,000 mile intervals. But that's once the break-in stuff is fully washed out. Now that's a process that might take a couple oil changes. So with the time being, we're just looking for progress. That's really what you're looking for. You're really not gonna get much info off of one single report. You almost need to get a several of them in a row and just see how things progress over time. Anyway, back to the comment. Copper is a bit elevated too, but again, that just from breaking and should wash out with time. No fuel dilution, coolant or water turned up so far, so good. And those are things you wanna look at. So let's take a look at the numbers here. Again, odometer is reading 4,530 miles when I did the oil change. So that's the time that I got the oil sample and it started with zero. So aluminum's a little higher than normal at eight. Chromium is exactly there. Iron at 39, whereas universal, universal average is 18. Copper at 25, where the universal average is 14. And then lead is normal, no tin. Molybdenum and manganese are both higher than the average. I find those usually in my other car, my Challenger in a truck, those got elevated because of additives I used, what, either in a fuel system, a fuel octane booster, or a fuel system cleaner, or oil additives. Uh, so I'm guessing some of that may be possibly from the fuel that I use uh, because a lot of fuel now, especially top tier fuel, 
they have cleaners and detergents in them. So I think a lot of that may come from that. And this Jeep, I keep wanting to say truck, this Jeep uses all 87 octane and we just get it from the Kroger gas station, which is busy as heck. Uh, so they're cycling through the fuel quite a bit. So I know it definitely don't get any stale gas there. Anyway, that's aside the point. We got silver titanium, zero potassium, eight, not really anything to worry about. Boron is actually less than averages. Silicon much higher, which they already addressed. Which I need to look into silicon more and where that comes from. I feel like some silicon can signify that there's a leak like in your air filter or something and some dirt's coming in. Not 100% sure. Um, I need to look that up. And as I'm doing these, I look up a little bit here and there. So I'm getting more proficient in knowing what's going on. Uh, sodium calcium is under magnesium is pretty much right there phosphorus uh, a little below as well as zinc so those are all good barium and not all of these things again come from actual engine components not all engines have these components made with these materials and then we go to our bottom and we look at properties and this is a big this is where they tell kind of when you have other issues like coolant a leaky a bad gasket that mixes coolant and oil or whatever or fuel getting oil basically you get that like if you're running rich or you're not burning all the fuel or some other issues and then checking the oil properties themselves seeing how worn down it is and how much life the oil has left so you can see the viscosity pretty much right in the middle of the optimal range so the oil is good and really other than all the particles that it picked up uh didn't get overused or worn out or anything flashpoint that flashpoint if you're not aware that's the temperature at which the vapors of the substance can ignite or flash. So for engine oil, it's usually around 400. And so that's why what they want is above 385. Anything above that is usually where oil is at. Gas, obviously, it's made to burn to combust. So the flash point on gas is pretty dang low, like really, 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 really low. Gas vapors doesn't take much to ignite. So if you get fuel mixed into your oil, that's obviously gonna drop the flash point of the oil. So if it got lower than 385, you know, okay, there's something wrong because the flash point should not be that low. And that's when you look at the fuel percentage, which they look and there's trace, very low, low trace, less than 0.5%. So we're good with that. And then obviously you have the antifreeze water percentage and solubles, all that is really low. So yeah, so there you have it. There's the first report. Every oil change, however long we have this Jeep, I'm gonna keep doing oil analysis reports and I'll keep doing videos to show you the progress of how the engine is. I thought this one would be really cool just to for people to see what the break-in oil looks like. And also, if you do your own analysis, if you missed your break-in one or something, and you have a Jeep or a three, really if you have a 3.6 Pentastar, because this engine is in many, many different vehicles across Dodge, Chrysler, Ram, uh, I was about to say Plymouth, uh, and Jeep. So this kind of gives you an idea where mine is at. And my wife drives this car, so she doesn't drive the way I do. She is a tame driver. <laughs> uh, you know, she's getting on the gas normal. She's not viewing traffic lights as Christmas trees on a drag strip the way I do. Uh, so the engine takes a lot less, doesn't work as hard as when I drive, which I'm driving it right now because my battery in my truck died and I took this opportunity to figure, you know, I had to do these couple videos with the Jeep. So this is perfect. I could be sitting in a Jeep to do these videos about the Jeep. So I hope that info helped. Hope you learned something from it or used it for whatever you need to use it for. As always, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. See you at the drag strip.